Welcome to the instant sequence on a visualization tutorial. In this tutorial, we will cover how to do an instant sequence on a visualization of your light display. Um, we've started out with the Superstar sequencer in the uh, default CCR mode. To change that, we can click on the Tools menu and select Layout. And right here, you can see it says CCR mode and visualization mode. We will select visualization mode, click OK. And what it does is it uses a uh, visualization file in the samples directory um, that comes standard with the download. Um, it, it has some light strings on the roof line and, and some around two windows here and on the, some on the bushes. And here's a, a small mega tree and, and some more on the bushes. Now we can do an instant sequence on this very easily the same way we always have. We click on tools, instant sequence and uh, we can just use the defaults open an audio file I'm gonna use house on Christmas Street and we say sequence all it's analyzing uh, the audio file and defining all the trigger points right now and now it's actually creating the effects when it's done it puts those effects up at the top here and uh, there's a play button right here to play the sequence but realize that uh, clicking on this button does exactly the same thing so I'm going to use this button I click on play so that's pretty cool that's what it created just using the defaults and we can do our same old thing of roll dice and uh, sequence all again and I might note that um, this roll dice it randomly cr uh, selects uh, themes up here but this this color and color by time stuff is is not so random it it's programmed to always uh, the first time you click on roll dice it's going to do RGBW by group and say every four seconds just sort of to show you what that does um, so uh, let's see what that did let me tell you about this house there's one in every and so you notice each one of the rows is cycling through the colors. This bottom row, he's right, he's white right now. Now he's going red, and the orange is close to red, so it gets turned on. And the yellow is close to green, so it gets turned on when green and purple gets turned on with blue. So you notice it's cycling through red, green, blue, white, and now back to red. So that's pretty cool. Um, just to give some background here on how Superstar handles uh, visualizations, you notice um, each one of these lights here corresponds to a little square on the sequencing grid. And these window lights, they each have one square on the sequencing grid. The the lights on the bushes each have one square and each uh, strand each bundle on the mega tree it has a little square and then finally uh, this this guy has a square to himself also and you notice that it sorted them by rows these green lines show where it found rows and then it placed the lights on those rows on the sequencing grid um, and notice that you know these this light string here is is red and that's all he has is red in him but these window lights they have a, a red string a green string a blue string and a white string in them and they are in the visualizer defined as one fixture and each fixture is assigned to a square on the sequencing grid and so the way this works is 
uh, when an effect is applied to this square, if, if that effect is red, then it only lights up the red lights in, uh, in, in these strings. If, if that effect has red and green in it, then the red and the green lights get lit up. And uh, the same applies for these bundles in the uh, mega tree. They, they have uh, red, green, blue, and white strings in them. So, you know, they, they can be uh, turned on in different colors also. So I just wanted to let you know how that works. And I'm going to minimize this. And right behind Superstar, I have the visualizer open here. And uh, if you launch the visualizer and then click on the file menu, then click on open, the default is for him to be in the visualizations editor directory but you can navigate to the samples directory and that's where you'll find the light strings file and here is the visualization that was being used in um, Superstar. You notice like here if we click on Bushes 2 he is a he's orange and he's an LOR device on the regular network he's assigned to a, a controller that has unit ID 01 and he's using channel 6 of that controller. I realize that circuit slash address means channel on a controller. Um, so these bushes lights, you know, they just have one set of lights on them. But the window lights, you'll notice that they have four sets of lights in them. This has red, green, blue, and white strings in it, and it, and we've uh, told it the uh, unit ID and channel number of each one of those uh, that each one of those lights is plugged into. And so, when you define your visualization, it, it, the preferred way to do it is to do it like this, uh, as opposed to making each string a separate fixture. If if all the strings are on the window, we'll then put them in one fixture and assign them this way. And to make the mega tree, you use the uh, mega tree wizard here, but uh, I'm not going to go through that. I, I, that's not the purpose of this tutorial. Um, we, we have to, I want to spend time on instant sequence here. So, I just uh, wanted to show that and now I'm going to open a uh, a more cl complex visualization. We'll go, go back down to the standard editor directory and I had a customer named Kenneth Smith send me a visualization and he actually had some CCRs in his visualization but I've taken the CCRs out to make it more simple and also to show that uh, you know you can sequence something with no CCRs in it and this is a much much larger display, a really cool display, and uh, he actually um, it's the first time he'd created a visualization and and he did what uh, so many people do is it created a separate fixture for each string of lights. So here he has um, actually a better example is well, his mega tree has a separate fixture for each string of lights and um, oh but they're all in a prop and they're so I don't know maybe that's all right but a, a better example is the these little mini trees here uh, here it says uh, tree two tree one green and you see he's a separate fixture and then he says tree one red well they're both on top of each other and the preferred way to do it would have been to assign these these red and green lights in the same fixture but that's okay uh, it'll still work in Superstar it, you'll, you'll just end up with more little green squares uh, on the sequencing grid um, so let's go back to Superstar here and we can import that visualization file by saying file import visualization and we're just going to use all the default settings here 
and we're going to select that same file, Kenneth Smith, no CCRs, and there it is. That's a really cool light display, and you'll see we have a lot more little green squares on here, and so let's do an instant sequence on this. Uh, we're going to have to, I'm going to um, use the same settings here and say sequence all. It's going to have to build some new stuff here and we still have well no it uh, that's one thing to note whenever you import a visualization file it it resets to the defaults here so uh, it anyway it, it's it's come up with some default settings here and let's let's see what it came up with here Well, is that pretty cool or what? Now, uh, most people are really impressed with this, but the, they'll say it's too blinky, and I agree. Um, and I understand that's a problem, and I hope to work on that next year. But for this year, um, this this is you're gonna you're stuck with the blinkiness. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, but there are some still some really cool things you can do. Uh, one thing is. Uh, to sort of do what I was showing you before that you can uh, we can set TCM1 here to be one more f full length and if you say RGBW by group he's going to do the whole group of effects the same and I'm going to say change the color every two seconds and for movement I'm gonna do none and that's gonna make the morph go full length the same direction every time so we do that and now I'm gonna assign this TCM1 to the same to all seven rows and then in addition um, well okay first I'm going to show you what that does So now you can see right up here that it's cycling through red, green. Oops, let's scroll more slowly, and you can see it goes red, green, white, red, green, white. And yet, what we had set was red, green, blue, white. Where'd the blue go? Well, that's because this light display has absolutely no blue light strings in it. So the software sees that and skips uh, cycling through. Um, blue so let's play this and see what it looks like so that's pretty cool it's cycling through the colors and to me that helps take the blinkiness away now you'll notice that the each one of these rows is being triggered by a different frequency and so they're not being you know they're not synchronized to each other they, they, what you can do is in the timing map if you set all seven of the rows to be all frequencies then they're all going to have the same triggers and they're all going to be lined up so to speak so let's do sequence all and you'll notice now because all seven rows had the same actually is it just six rows let me shrink this down oh yeah we can shrink this so we can see more rows and now you can see all seven rows um, are are being triggered the same as we scroll through here and it's going through red green white red green white and you might ask well why is the bottom one always white that's because um, the uh, bottom one contains nothing but white lights. Um, and I might note here, see if we if we click on this, you'll notice that this is a morph that's being applied on the full length of the sequencing row. And I, I realize it's confusing. Row one is at the top here and yet it's at the bottom here. And just there's some good reasons for why it's that way. You just just realize that that 
So here's row two, and he's being applied along that. There's row three, row four, row five, row six. So what it's doing is applying a morph across the entire sequencing row of each one of these. So let's play this and see what it looks like. So you can see it's going across the display. First red and then white, and then red, and then green. And that's pretty cool, but what would be cooler is if it went across the whole display more evenly. And the reason it's not doing that is because you notice these green lines, we've only got four of them. It, it detected four rows here, but the bottom row has a whole bunch of lights on it. And if we, um, if we click on this, we can see that this is assigned to that light. And if we just keep on clicking, you'll see, in fact, we could just do all these guys. However, I might say, see if we set all the colors on, then it's going to Anyway, you can see that's those guys, and then it ran out, and that's those guys. There's so many lights on this first row that it couldn't fit them all on one sequencing row, and it, it actually used the, the next nine up here also. Um, now this one, let's erase all this. If we... You can see that's the mega tree, so it put the mega tree on its own uh, row there. But anyway, by selecting things, you can see how it assigned things. But what I wanted to point out here in this tutorial is that this first bottom row got assigned to three different sequencing rows. Well, that's why when it applied a morph across here, it didn't get applied across the whole length of the display. So the solution to that is to say import visualization again and where it says sequencing grid max length the default is 50 I'm going to increase that to 110 and then we import the file again and now you can see there's only four sequencing rows there's still four green lines here but this time it was able to fit all the lights uh, on this bottom row on one sequencing row up here. Now, uh, when we imported that visualization, it, it reset all our defaults. So we're going to have to go back and set uh, one more f full length in RGB, uh, RGBW by group and we'll set movement to none and we want to set all four sequencing rows to TCM1 and in the timing map we want them to all be triggered the same so let's do sequence all and you'll see now we just have four rows up here and the bottom one still only uh, and I realize bottom really is the top it's these top lights up here and they only contain white lights so that's why he never changes color but all these others see now this is one morph that's being applied across the whole bottom row and that represents the whole row of lights down there so now let's play this and see what it looks like So now you can see it's doing a nice sweep across the whole light display from left to right and it's cycling through the different colors. Now is that cool or what? There has never been a way to coordinate your lights this easily before. Now one last thing I want to show before I end this tutorial is that um, this movement thing is talking about moving the endpoints of the effect. In this case, the endpoints uh, are, you know, here's the endpoints of this morph. And if we, you know, you can set the movement to slow right 
and what that normally means is move the endpoints by one pixel to the right well you can move this guy one pixel to the right but where are you going to move him and anyway uh, the software handles effects that go across the whole length of the sequencing grid uh, it treats them as an exception and uh, if you set anything other than none it just changes direction it just alternates between uh, going to the left and going to the right um, because that ends up being more interesting than uh, moving them one pixel each time so let's um, sequence all again and this is going to do the same thing except it's going to change direction every time so here it's going to the left and there it went to the right and as long as you're not prone to seasickness that's a really cool effect so um, there's some really cool stuff you can do with that this um, and again of course you can just do we can go set default ribbon assignment and say roll dice sequence all and it still comes up with some cool stuff um, Actually, I'm not that crazy about that one, but part of it is uh, so you can just roll dice again. And also, uh, if we go back to our setting the frequency spectrum, this is the default going to low to high. And roll the dice again. Okay, let's play that one. And that's pretty cool. Now, another thing you can do that I've, is, like, what if you just felt this was too blinky, but you really like the mega tree? Well, like I said, the it turns out that the I think I forget. I think the mega tree. Well, the mega tree plus some of these lights are all on this uh, third row, and. well which is actually the second row from the bottom and so that's this guy so if you just liked uh, the mega tree you could um, and that is row two you could set those to none and say sequence all and now it's only going to do I hope I did that right yeah, now it's just going to do the mega tree and these other lights on that row. And so if you wanted to, you could just do that and then sequence the rest of your lights manually. So, um, that's all I want to cover in this tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a super day.